you should invest in a team with some experience, also invest in the needed tools to get insightful information for your business. You're listening to the Keep Optimizing Podcast to increase your traffic, improve your conversion rates, and grow your profits. Hello and welcome. I'm Chloe Thomas, the host of this e-commerce marketing focused podcast. If you're not familiar with our format, well, each month we normally focus on a different marketing method like email or SEO or Facebook ads. And then each week I interview a different expert to explore the latest advice on making it work for you. But this month, we're about getting ready for peak. It's a month where I get to showcase some big, important topics that we've not managed to fit in to another of our months this year and a chance to share with you the things you really need to know to make peak season extra successful this year. In this episode, we're not kicking off with a marketing method. We're kicking off with analytics. And I'll explain why in a second. But what we're going to end the month with, because I know you guys want to know about this, it's going to be... Our always super popular top tips of Black Friday episode that's coming up at the end of this month. So that's kind of like the Uber ideas for peak episode. So uh, make sure you're all subscribed so you don't miss out on that one. But analytics, why are we covering analytics to get today? Well, with the death of normal Google Analytics and the forced move to GA4 and all those privacy changes leading to attribution changes and analytics changes and all kinds of things about what data we've got and haven't got. Now is the time to be taking a long, hard look at your analytics strategy. Analytics strategy? What's that? It's something we all ought to have. And an analytics strategy is working out what analytics tools you should have and how you should be using them, basically. We're going to go through how to go about creating it, what it means, and in a lot more insight into it in a couple of moments. So get ready for that. And the good news is this is one of those strategies that the more complicated your business becomes, the more complicated the strategy becomes. So if you're a small business, this might be a one page strategy for you. And I'll talk a bit more about that at the end. And we'll be discussing the ins and outs of it all as we go through the episode. So enjoy and do make sure you listen right to the end of the episode because then you will get my guest quickfire insider tips with a really awesome resource that I can't believe I didn't know about before, but which I will be checking out imminently. And I'll also be sharing my take on it all and giving you some more ways that we can help you for free improve your business for peak. So stay tuned to the end. The most important customer communities are not where you think they are. They're not social media groups. They're not referral codes. They're not loyalty programs. They are the real world locations where your brand's communities hang out. And these are the communities that have the biggest influence on buying behaviour. Want to access that? You need Herdify. Herdify is the world's first community detection platform, which you can use to find out where real life recommendations are happening. Plug in your sales data, get immediate community insights and start planning your marketing campaigns in a whole new way. Just like Cotswold Outdoor, Ella's Kitchen, Snow and Rock, Perry's and Abel and Cole have done. Visit keepopt.com forward slash Herdify to learn more. That's K-E-E-P-O-P-T dot com slash H-E-R-D-I-F-Y. Keepopt.com forward slash Herdify. Do you have a problem only an awesome piece of e-commerce tech can solve? Is your e-commerce tech stack not quite fit for purpose anymore? Then why not explore the latest technology on offer at e-commerce tech? We are going through a hugely changing time in the tech landscape at the moment. And if you want to be bringing the best results you can in your business, then you need to be on top of what's going on in the tech space. To find out that and much more, head to keepopt.com forward slash tech. That's K-E-E-P-O-P-T dot com forward slash T-E-C-H. Keepopt.com forward slash tech to find all the best tools for your e-commerce store. In this episode, I'm chatting with analytics expert Manuel Montanari. Manuel has over 23 years experience managing digital analytics projects for publishers, broadcasters and e-commerce brands. And he's been senior digital analytics consultant at Map Digital for the last three years. Hello, Manuel. Hello. Hi, Chloe. Thanks for having me. Oh, God. I'm really impressed by your 
introduction. So thanks a lot for that. <laughs> Just setting the expectations very high here. <laughs> but thanks for the introduction. I have to say, Manuel, I stole the great majority of it from your LinkedIn profile. So uh, I think you, I think you're the one who set the bar high. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah got it. <laughs> and uh, from our chats and conversations, I know we'll be able to hit that bar. So thank you so much for being here. How did you get into the world of analytics? Oh, thanks for asking that. That's a very good question. Uh, I barely know it myself. It, it happened by chance. So 23 years ago, I was working for a press clipping company as a technician. And I just bumped into internet, such a new things for us. I'm based in Italy, by the way. So Italy came into the internet world about in the late 90s. And I just, it just hit me. And I, I knew I had to work uh, in something related to the internet and the digital world. And it happened that I answered to a monster application seeking for a technical expert uh, taking care of audience measurement, something related to digital. At the time, digital analytics wasn't even a thing. There was no such Google Analytics or anything. It was just log analyzers. And, and that's what I when I started. And then since then, I, I worked a lot with a lot of customers uh, being uh, a, a vendor. So I was... Uh, taking care first of a, in a company called Red Sheriff, then Nielsen, then WebTrack, then Map Digital nowadays. And I was working a lot with uh, publishers and broadcasters, uh, tracking their audience on the website and then the applications. And I really got passionate about data and analytics and everything that analytics enables you to do. It just hit me and I think uh, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life because I just love it. I'm the digital analytics guy just because I love it. I think analytics <laughs> is one of those things which either you, you love it or you just don't understand it. And I think for those of us who love it, it can become all-consuming. So, uh, so I totally get where you're coming from there. Now, whilst I would happily reminisce with you about hits and log files and all those kind of things we had to deal with all those decades ago, what I want to talk about is is what's happening now because it feels like a lot of brands are going, oh, what? We need an analytics strategy. And a lot of brands are going, what? What's an analytics strategy? So Manuel, first off, what is an analytics strategy? And then we'll get into why might we want to have one. So what is an analytics strategy? Well, analytics strategy is something rather new for many people out there just because in the past 10 years, a few companies had a strategy behind analytics just because they were using Google Analytics, implemented Google Analytics, tracking what was the standard tracking of Google Analytics, and everybody was fine with it. Now, what happened in the last couple of years, we know that GA3 has been sunset and there is GA4, and that's where everybody kind of woke up from this limbo and realized that if you don't have a strategy behind analytics, and I get to what a analytics strategy is in a moment, you're going to basically fail because you don't know what you're going to do with your numbers. You will have numbers from your analytics tool. And uh, first of all, do you trust or not those numbers? Are those numbers accurate or not? Are, the, are they telling you the truth? Are they complete? Should I trust this number and then take the decisions based on those numbers and then take actions? Will those actions uh, you know, drive my, my business forward or will I just fail in the strategy because the numbers were wrong in the first place? So those are the questions that really raised into my customers' mind uh, in the last uh, couple of years. And so what's an analytic strategy? Basically is asking yourself what you need and then from there implement the analytics accordingly. Uh, this seems to be obvious, but it's not so obvious when you think about the fact that I would say that 80 or 90% of the meetings that I attend with customers, they have some KPIs in mind. So you ask them, what's your KPI? How do you measure the success of your uh, digital strategy? You know, the main KPI is conversion rate, of course. But then you dig deep, you, you try to dig deeper and see, okay, but how do you track your success? Uh, is there uh, any other KPI? There, that's where you see that probably they should stop a little bit and just ask themselves what their goals are. 
And so when it comes to the implementation of a digital analytics platform, you want to have your answers first from the meeting, from, uh, from the, meeting, from the customer, and, and they need to understand exactly what's their goal in terms of where they want to go from A to B, where they want to be in six months or in 12 months. And then according to that strategy, create an analytic strategy that will allow them to collect the numbers, to collect the figures that they need to take decisions that will take them over there. So I think that analytics is uh, important because it's a tool, but because it's a tool, it's a software, it has a, it's, it has a purpose, but it's, it shouldn't be our goal just to have an analytics. We should use the analytics, uh, which is something that we tend to forget. Even I do sometimes, you know, see the numbers and that's it. But if I stare at the numbers and I, I don't take any action, that's a, a worthless exercise. What I love about your explanation there is that it's so clear that an analytic strategy is like any strategy in that it starts at the end. You know, it's like we have to know what do we want? What do we want out of this? What are our objectives? What are we trying to hit? What do we need to know? And the, only then can we work back and do it. I know, I know a lot of people who have been pulling their hair out trying to create GA4's perfect installation because it's, you know, it's kind of like, we used to be able to just plug and play. We definitely can't do that anymore. But they start with what's the setup options. They don't start with the what do I actually want to track? What do I need to know? What am I trying to achieve? And I think in some ways, you know, people might think, oh, an analytic strategy that sounds really huge and like a bit of a nightmare and it's going to take over my life. But actually, it can simplify it a huge amount as well, can't it? Because if you go, right, well, actually, these are the only stats we care about at the moment, then you've just freed up a whole load of workload. Yeah, imagine a dashboard where you have 20 different KPIs and in another one where you have five, and those are the five that you really care about, that you should care about because those are the five KPIs that you can take actions from, that you want to derive insights from those. So less is more. It's something that I always encourage my customers to think about when they create dashboards to circulate information internally, for example. And focusing also means that it's more clear in the communication. And clear information is uh, helping to derive more actionable insights. Because if you have a, a clear input of data, then it's more clear with which type of action you should take and which KPIs you should monitor to see the success of your initiative, for example, your campaign and so on. So it's something that it's really important to have a strategy, but having a, an analytic strategy means that you have already gone through the, the checklist of your goals and your, uh, your objective as a company. And then from there, you, you already prioritize the ones that you really care in the short term and long term. And then you implement the analytics uh, strategy accordingly. And it feels to me like in this world of privacy changing, impacting on what data we can and can't catch, and in this world of the end of GA3, is that we're now entering a space where many e-commerce stores, not all by any means, but where many e-commerce stores, for them, the analytics strategy solution is not just Google Analytics, it's Google Analytics, possibly just for their Google ad side of stuff. And then something that's a bit more robust for the general website tracking, it might be something else for the ads tracking, it might be something else, or they might manage to find one tool that can do it all. But it, it's a multi-tool strategy for many these days, isn't it? And well, you're, you're, you're nodding away there. So, so what do you think? I mean, that's exactly what I think. I mean, there is GA4, there is Matomo, there is Map Intelligence, there is Piano, Peewick, Adobe, Mixpanel. There are so many tools out there. The most important thing is, no, doesn't matter which tool you use. The important thing is that the tool must be right for you. And the only way to decide if it's right for you is that does it actually enables you to derive actionable insights? That, that, that's the goal. So if the tool allows you to do that, then that's the right tool for you, period. But if you feel that the analytics platform you chose is holding you back from getting those truly actionable insights, well, maybe it's the right time to seek for an alternative solution that maybe 
can can be uh, run in parallel to the existing ones. So you just said Google, you can use it for uh, advertising on Google ads, for example. That's a very good example. But then if you want to do an analysis for UX design and you want to track, uh, for example, you want to do session recording and see what each user or each visitor to your, on your website does click by click, maybe you want to use a specialized tool that does session recording very well. Something I always like to say is that there is no tool that does absolutely everything for everyone. So uh, each company may have uh, a, a preference for a tool or another one based on the habits, but also based on the type of information they, they, they need to collect. And that's why strategy is important, because by, by having a clear analytic strategy, enables you to have a checklist of features or functionalities that you want to uh, cross-check that your tool of choice has and then to help you choose between one or another or even multiple tools at the same time. I use this analogy to explain myself. In my, in my spare time, I do an elect electronic music producer and I use a certain software called Digital Audio Workstation and I know other producers that use, for example, Logic Audio or others like me prefer Ableton Live, other use Pro Tools and so on. Why do, did I choose Ableton versus another? It's just because that's what I learned in the, in the first place. And as long as it, is, it will enable me to do exactly what I want to do, which is being creative and create electronic music the way I want and when I want it, I'm not going to change it. But at some point, maybe in my future career, I will start doing a, a different type of music. Maybe I will start doing a live recording. And then I will probably find myself trying to seek another tool because it uh, will fulfill my future needs. It's a software and a digital analytics platform is a software as a service. So which one is the best for, for you? It's the one that doesn't hold you back from doing exactly what you need to do. Uh, with deriving insights from from the data. Now, Manuel, I, I, I think that makes it so clear that you've got to understand what you actually need before you start going and looking for tools. But I think one of the other really interesting phrases you've been using is actionable insights. And uh, wow, a, a long time ago, I used to do a bit of training on training people on Google Analytics and used to find that the majority of people who actually bothered to open their analytics which was not everybody who came to the training, it has to be said. But those who did were very good at finding interesting things. Ooh, isn't that interesting? You know, ooh, isn't that interesting? But things that were of no use at all. You know, they might influence some copywriting for one email, but they weren't actionable. They weren't really insights. They were, and they certainly weren't actionable insights. And I think that's the bit which... I think sometimes we can we can derive a lot of comfort from some stats, but unless we can actually do something on the back of those stats, it's a waste of time, effort and energy pulling them together. And it, there is fundamentally the whole point of an analytic strategy is to give you information you can use to optimize. Anything you want to add to the bit about actionable insights before we go on to talk about people? Yeah, uh, I would say that actionable insights to me is a, is a subset of all the insights you can collect. And insights is a, a creative process. I like to define it as a being a creative process because you stare at the data. The longer you stare at the data, uh, and I will uh, reiterate this uh, maybe later as well, time is your worst enemy because we're in the digital space and we always uh, fight against time but it's also our best friend when it comes to deriving insights because the more time you spend or invest looking at data, the more likely you will find useful insights. The more you not get to know your data, the more you will be able to derive insights. Now, when it comes to actionable insights, I use uh, this analogy. What happens is you may find the most interesting fact ever, the biggest novelty looking at the data, but if it doesn't allow you to take an action, it, if it doesn't tell you what you need to do next, it's kind of useless. Or at least it's something that you could put it you know, in the back of your brain and keep it for the future reference. But at the moment, you cannot take any action. So, for example, you can have a beautiful A-B testing running on your website telling you that the CTA button for adding to the cart, if it's red, is more 
effective than being yellow. Very simple example. And the, then that's a good insight that you can present to the CEO of the company. And at the end of the day, if the CEO of the company tells you, okay, that's interesting, but I'm not going to put a red uh, CTA button because our corporate branding color is yellow, I, I need to keep it yellow. There's nothing you can do about it. That's not going to be changeable. And therefore, the insight is not actionable. So it's always depend on the context as well. And also, uh, I would suggest that if an insight explains the what happens and not the why it happens, it's not a full insight. It's still not an actionable insight. To aim to have the, the right type of information into the insight that we deliver, we should also answer the, the why question rather than just the what. And very well put. And I want to take us on to talk about people because I think the other thing which I've seen people make an error of when it comes to analytics and analytic strategies is setting up a tool or maybe even setting up an automated report, but that no one ever looks at and no one ever actually analyzes. And this is something I wanted to talk about anyway, but I also want to give a shout out to Jason Thompson from 33 Sticks, who made it very clear on one of my LinkedIn posts that we should be talking about this in this episode. And Jason is completely right. Do we need to hire an analyst? Do we need to block time in our diaries? Do we need to hire an analysis agency? We have to use the data, not just know it's sitting in a spreadsheet somewhere. So what what's your advice to people on how to actually turn the data into? In a hu- get the humans involved in turning the data into those actionable insights? Well, the short answer is yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> because uh, you need to have people that have time to look at into the data to derive those insights. You need to have some common understanding on the business model you will play with. So someone that already knows what the comp- goal of the company is, short and long term, of course. And if it's an internal team that knows their the numbers, knows the numbers by by heart, for example, that helps a lot because then you will have also uh, what I call the time to market. If you need an analysis and you have to wait one week to get the data, then maybe that's not going to be an actionable insight because the campaign was due to run five days ago and you already have uh, you know, five days delay from the planet campaign because you were waiting for the data for the next optimization. So time to market is vital. And if you have an internal team doing that, that's really a very good starting point. Uh, When it comes to an external agency, that can help, of course. But my recommendation would always be external agencies can help you define your analytic strategy defining the implementation, helping you assess the implementation and the the quality of the data that you're collecting, but you know more than anyone else your business. So you should be able to put efforts in analyzing the data yourself because no one else can help you as much as you can help yourself learning how to get in hold of the data and uh, connecting the dots. That's the, that's the part of the job that I do like doing, which is connecting the dots. But on the other hand, I would never be as able as one of my customers getting to know their own business, of course. So that's why I would suggest that the first uh, step would be to create a team. Even one, one person is enough to start with, but with a dedicated agenda of analyzing data, deriving insights from data. Because there is no tool that provides you with insights. I mean, there are tools that uh, give you uh, automated alerts, for example. Those are not insights. Those are just alerts. But then you need somebody that looks at the data and tries to understand whether or not the alert is a good warning point that you should really dig into it or just noise that you should forget about. Thanks, Manuel. It's been great picking your brains about analytics strategies. Listeners, please remember to stay tuned right to the end so you don't miss out on Manuel's insider tips to help you even more and my suggestions for more free resources to help you improve things even further in your business.
The most important customer communities are not where you think they are. They're not social media groups. They're not referral codes. They're not loyalty programs. They are the real world locations where your brand's communities hang out. And these are the communities that have the biggest influence on buying behaviour. Want to access that? You need Herdify. Herdify is the world's first community detection platform, which you can use to find out where real life recommendations are happening. Plug in your sales data, get immediate community insights and start planning your marketing campaigns in a whole new way. Just like Cotswold Outdoor, Ella's Kitchen, Snow and Rock, Perry's and Abel and Cole have done. Visit keepopt.com forward slash Herdify to learn more. That's K-E-E-P-O-P-T dot com slash H-E-R-D-I-F-Y. Keepopt.com forward slash Herdify. Do you have a problem only an awesome piece of e-commerce tech can solve? Is your e-commerce tech stack not quite fit for purpose anymore? Then why not explore the latest technology on offer at e-commerce tech? We are going through a hugely changing time in the tech landscape at the moment. And if you want to be bringing the best results you can in your business, then you need to be on top of what's going on in the tech space. To find out that and much more, head to keepopt.com forward slash tech. That's K-E-E-P-O-P-T dot com forward slash T-E-C-H. Keepopt.com forward slash tech to find all the best tools for your e-commerce store. Okay, Manuel, so far we've gone deep into analytic strategy. Now you get to wow us even further with your insider knowledge. So these questions can be about anything to do with analytic strategy, which of course includes everything we've already been talking about. Manuel, are you ready? Yes. Marvellous. Let's start with newbie advice. If we've inspired someone to take their first step, what do they need to know to give themselves the best chance of success? Okay, so I would start from what Forrester said uh, a few uh, months ago. They, they released a few studies, one of which said that insight-led businesses will grow between seven and ten times faster than the global economy will grow, which means that if you have a business that will use insights to take decisions, you have a higher chances to be successful. My suggestion is to focus on data that enables you to derive actionable insights, which means that you should invest in a team with some experience, also invest in the needed tools to get insightful information for your business. This is the, uh, in my opinion, is the very good starting point to start optimizing. I love that. That stat is crazy. So insight-led firms are going to be growing seven to 10 times faster than the average. And that's according to Forrester. And Forrester are very good at these kind of pieces of analysis themselves. So um, if any of you are going, oh, I don't need to bother with looking at the data and trying to learn something from it, that's the stat to, uh, to change your mind. Now, Manuel, once, of course, you've started, you've got to keep optimizing. So what's your favorite way to improve performance? Well, as you might have guessed by now, uh, I'm a fan of data. So my ob- obvious answer is to improve performance through insights derived from data, as we already said a few times here. So I don't want to annoy <laughs> the listeners, but this is the reiteration of the same concept. Time is your worst enemy on a daily basis, but it's also your best friend. The more time we spend analyzing the data, the most we can get from from the data itself to optimize our business and improve uh, our performances. For example, if the tool that we choose then uses machine learning and AI that helps us, for example, spotting for outliers and new trends or highlighting new campaigns that are uh, overperforming versus the average per campaign that we have, uh, or adding prediction to the users, for example, churn probability, conversion probability, that will also help us defining the best time to send an email. For example, these are the, I would say, cherry on top of the analytics platform that will help you also deriving more insights and more quickly. So in a nutshell, activation and then measurement and then activation and then again measurement and then reiterate. So improving performance is uh, also an exercise of uh, thousands of small improvements that will change and drive your business forward. 
nicely explained, Manuel. And um, and yeah, that is exactly what optimizing is all about, everyone. Now, if someone listening wants to learn more, is there one cheap or free resource you would recommend? There are many out there. Uh, one that I do la- like to share, it's uh, it's been made by MAP, so the company I work with, but I would uh, use it anyways, even if I wasn't working at MAP and recommend it. It's called Improve Your Marketing. So it's improveyour.marketing. That's the website. You can register for free. And what it allows you to do is uh, to select from a a variety of uh, uh, strategies that a marketer should care about when creating an overall blueprint of uh, all their campaigns. And so you can uh, finger pick the strategies that you feel apply most uh, to your business and then uh, uh, create a blueprint for, for that and share among your colleagues. Also, if you want, you can contribute to the community by creating your own strategy and sharing those strategies among uh, the community, which is a nice thing that I think adds adds, uh, a bit of a human touch because then you can share and see how many other users and marketers are liking your ideas or even taking actions on those tactics that you're creating yourself. So it's a very useful tool uh, to keep track of uh, any marketing automation activities that you are planning to do. So again, improve your dot marketing is the website. And I really encourage everyone to at least take a look at it. I can't believe I've never heard of that before. I'm totally having a look at that straight after we finish recording this. So thank you for that one, Manuel. Uh, finally, crystal ball time. What's coming up in the next six to 12 months that we should be getting ready for? Okay. So, well, I think that the most obvious answer is AI. So AI is getting a lot of tractions. We have seen those uh, AI articles everywhere, in the, even in the non-digital world uh, industry. So everybody's talking about ChatGPT and the popularity is getting a lot of traction. But I've seen AI in action already because there are tools that I've already used machine learning and AI to provide more insightful information. So for what I see in the next uh, six to 12 months is the application of AI tailored into the world of digital analytics as uh, creating suggestions or asking questions directly to an AI engine so that you can learn from the AI engine rather than staring at uh, graphs. Maybe you can ask, what's the most relevant referral? What's the most relevant campaign for me in the last uh, 12 weeks, for example? And AI will tell you right ahead instead of asking yourself, which analysis should I run? Which is the dimension? Which KPIs? and so on. So that's the idea. And I think that's probably something that I would definitely look into uh, in the upcoming year to see more and more, and also wish to see that because it will help my day-to-day of consultancy with my customers. Why not? (laughs) Yeah. And and it's probably worth making clear to everyone, we are not using AI to find the actionable insights. We're using AI to fast track us finding the actionable insight. Exactly. Exactly. So we are the ultimate brain that has to find the insight. Insight is, in the, is the interpretation. And also, by the way, I, I, I usually take, um, I've, I have prepared the workshop that I share with my customers usually. And the workshop is how to go, get from data to insights and actionable insights. And one of the topics that I cover in this, uh, uh, in this workshop is the getting to know that we are human beings and that out there, we have all biases. We are biased. So because I have uh, cognitive biases myself, the data that I will try to pick to uh, explain and insights to my colleagues, for example, can be biased by my, my, my own background and everything. So we need to make sure that whenever we look at the data, we are conscious that we might have uh, uh, cognitive biases when we read the data and to also when we explain the insights to our colleagues that they might be biased to themselves. So it's a human thing that we have to relate with and, you know, live our day to day and be aware of this. It's important as well. Yeah, all marketers should be aware of cognitive biases. They are um, fascinating and confounding at the same time. Um, Manuel, before we dive off into neuroscience, uh, we are very nearly at the end of the show. So could you please let the listeners know where they can find you and your business? So my business is map.com, M-A-P-P.com. 
uh, Map Sales, a, a multi channel marketing automation tool which is powered by customer insights and analytics platform using AI to enrich the collected data. Uh, so, whether you're a marketer that wants to create a marketing automation journey, sending emails, SMS, uh, push notification into apps, or you want and you want to analyze data from your website and you're looking for a digital analytics uh, tool or platform beyond Google Analytics 4 or others, MAP uh, is a perfect candidate for you to check out. So that's uh, that's what I would suggest uh, to, to check out. <laughs> Brilliant. And that's map.com, M-A-P-P.com, everyone. Uh, well, thank you so much for coming on the Keep Optimizing podcast. It's been awesome learning from you. And I hope we've made the idea of putting together an analytic strategy a lot less daunting for our listeners. So thank you for being here. Thanks, Chloe, for having me. And thanks, everyone, too, uh, for listening. So it's time to pull together your analytics strategy, even if it's a one pager where you admit to yourself that the only numbers you look at are the finance numbers and therefore the only analytics you really need in place is Google Analytics for for your Google Ads performance. That's okay, so long as you know that that's the only analytics that you need and that's going to give you the data you're actually going to use. So if you're going to go ahead and create that strategy, it starts off with working out what information do you need? What goals are you trying to achieve and what data do you need to help you achieve them? Then you can work out what the best way of getting that data into the business is. Get those tools set up properly. We talked about that right at the beginning of the interview about making sure the data you're looking at is actually the data you're looking at. The number of e-commerce businesses I've come across who rely on an analytics tool but do not know when asked if the power, if you know if the money value they're looking at is before or after promotions have been applied, includes or doesn't include delivery, includes or doesn't include sales tax or VAT is phenomenal. So make sure you know what numbers you're actually looking at. And then put the time aside, whether that's a new person in your team, whether that's hiring a freelancer to do it for a day a week, or whether that's blocking out a day a month of your time to actually dive into the data. Make sure you're finding that time to to look for the insight, to look for the actionable insights that you can use and make changes based on in order to improve your business. Because that Forrester stat is going to sit with me for a while. The inside-led businesses are going to grow seven to ten times faster than non-insight led businesses. So huge opportunity to get this right and you know see this as an as an opportunity to put your business forward not that the GA4 issues are an issue you have to deal with but they're an opportunity to do ever greater things. Okay you can get links to the things we discussed the transcript of the episode, our notes on the episode and more at keepoptimizing.com and go straight to the correct page of the website by using the short link keepopt.com forward slash whatever the number is of this episode. And when you get to the website, please do add yourself to our email list so you don't miss out on any of those other things I share to help you improve your business. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Keep Optimizing podcast. If you've enjoyed it and want to continue learning, then First off, scroll back up your feed to episodes 163 to 167 because last month we explored the changing digital advertising landscape. Not very much about analytics, but certainly something you need to be listening to right now to be ready for Q4 and peak. And if you're interested in learning more about analytics, then we did a full month on attribution very closely allied to analytics earlier this year. And you can find that via the short link, keepopt.com forward slash attribution, or just scroll back up the podcast feed until you come to the episodes with attribution in the title. Have a great week and make sure you listen to the next episode so I can help you to keep optimizing your marketing. Access everything Keep Optimizing at keepoptimizing.com. That's with an S, not a Z. Find the latest e-commerce tech at keepopt.com forward slash tech.